This video demonstrates how to make a variety of camouflage systems, all of which are adaptable to different terrain and brush conditions. Be sure to watch the entire video before beginning the construction of any of these systems. And before purchasing any camouflage material, examine the environment you will be working in so you can match your camouflage to that environment. The systems covered include the rifle rack, blinds, the camo pack, the sniper cape, synthetic full body suits, burlap body suits, stalker suits, the bush rag, bush patches, British sniper veil, and modifications for a basic ghillie suit. Okay, so here we are, major surplus, and this is pretty much the section where we see all the goods. 10 foot by 10 foot, three-quarter fish netting. This is pretty much going to be the netting that's going to be the base of all the suits that we're going to be covering today. So make sure you get this. For the actual material that we're going to be cutting our leaves or synthetic out of, whoa, this stuff is great. Uh, it looks like it's an OD parachute material. Um, you see that it's going to fray a little bit, but it's also got this ripstop seam in it. So you can cut leaves out of this or uh, shred this up for your, your, your suits and it's going to be really light and it's going to deravel a little bit which is going to kind of give you a blending edge. So we're going to grab say a couple yards of this stuff and here you got the white version. Now if you're going to be doing say a snow suit or you're going to be up in the snow you're going to want to get a couple of yards of this. If your whole suit, if you're going to do a full body suit and you're just going to be using this material uh, you're going to probably need about six yards of this stuff. We're going to be taking probably three yards of this stuff because this has got some real nice colors and you can see that they have a nice contrast between this other mesh that we're going to be taking. Now you can go to the fire department and they uh, comp you about 10 to 25 uh, sacks and you're not going to have to pay uh, a buck per sack but we're going to grab uh, 10 of these today. Here we got plastic leaves. You don't want to get plastic leaves. We're going to be using the real material. The suits that we're making are just platforms that you can stick natural vegetation in. Yeah, you have burlap and you're going to have synthetic material that's going to be kind of taking out your outline, making a mound type appearance. But uh, you're not going to be wanting to use plastic leaves. You're going to be wanting to take natural vegetation from the environment you're going to be in and placing that into your suit. Uh, here's their elastics. Here's like a quarter inch shock cord. This is half inch elastic. Here's another half inch elastic. Uh, you're going to want to get about six feet of uh, either of this stuff. Be nice to get a couple cord locks. Um, and you're going to want to make sure that uh, the elastic shock cord that you get will actually work with these. They have little teeny holes, little apertures here, um, and it might not fit um, all the elastic that you're going to be getting. So make sure that when you buy this, it works with the elastic cord that you buy as well. Your cost should probably be around 70, 80 bucks. One of the things your camouflage has got to do is break up the human outline. Is here's the human outline. What you want to do is take away this shoulder area, both these shoulder areas, so that the head becomes one with the shoulders, creating kind of like a mound effect. Instead of a human form, right here, you become a mound form. Uh, to create the mound type look, you're going to need material that's really light 
and bushes out a bit. In the past, it's primarily been burlap, burlap string. It's light, and it shoots off in different directions, so it gives you a nice mound type appearance. But what we got here is uh, the synthetic stuff. And this stuff is equally as light, if not lighter, and it bushes out even better than burlap. The second thing, two, your camouflage, you don't want differences in color that are so small that when you step back, say, 50 yards, it all blends together. What you want is large areas of different colored camouflage. So one area, you're going to want a lot of blacks. Another area, you're going to want a lot of lights. So that when this camouflage is viewed from, say, 100 yards, the outline of the person is still broken up. So when you're going to be tying burlap or this type of mesh material, synthetic, Whatever camouflage you choose, you're going to want to cheat certain areas that have a lot more darks than lights. Um, if you do light camouflage, then dark camouflage, light dark, in a very small area, this area, when viewed from, say, 50 yards, is going to blend into one color. And then your whole outfit is just one blob of one color. It doesn't break up your outline anymore. Here's my 10 by 10 netting. If you're going to be doing a full body suit, <clears throat> you're going to need 10 feet by 10 feet. Um, if you're just going to be doing a head veil or a piece that drapes down to here and your back, uh, you've got a lot of extra stuff. We also got from Bob this uh, mosquito mesh that you can see has a woodland pattern on it. But these are all pretty dark colors. Um, all this synthetic stuff, you can all see that it's uh, black, it's all OD. And if we were to make a suit from just these colors, uh, we're not going to have a lot of contrast. Uh, you can find older mosquito bars, and this is that uh, same mosquito mesh, and this is pretty much a tan color. But this is a uh, World War II surplus stuff, and this is hard to come by. There is one pattern that you can find. This is called Advantage Wetlands Camo. And as you can see, it's got a lot of nice tans, a lot of light browns. And so when you cut pieces of this out and integrate it with these other deals, then you're going to have some nice contrast. Uh, what I would recommend as well is to use good old burlap. And I bought a couple burlap sacks, and I'm going to use individual threads from this material and integrate it with my synthetic. You're going to have a nice contrast between the materials in your suit, and that's going to lend itself to help breaking up your outline and your human form. Uh, another problem with the synthetics, and I've been soaking these materials, and they do not take dye. This nylon is very hard to dye. If you do want to use this stuff and you want to color it, you can spray paint it. Um, so you can take this material, spray paint blacks and browns into it if you want to try and break up uh, this tan when putting it in your suit. The one type of material that's really prevalent out there uh, is this burlap. And burlap uh, dyes extremely well. You can either buy it already dyed and strung or you can dye your own burlap um, from uh, these burlap sacks that you get. Get your dyes from uh, Save-On, uh, Walmart, uh, wherever. Um, you can get it either in the liquid form or you can get it in the powder form. Um, they had dark green, so I'm going to use dark green. But usually this dark green isn't the right color. Usually you got to get a lot of this yellow stuff and add yellow. So I put in about a third bottle of this and I put in one pack already of the yellow and put another pack of the yellow in. And usually you gotta have warm water and then you just throw in your burlap. 
And when you're dyeing your burlap, you just kind of uh, watch it while you're doing it. And when it starts to get that good color, then you're going to take it out. But you don't want to take it out too soon. You want that dye to penetrate uh, the fiber. So probably going to leave it in there for two, three minutes. Now, when, if you're going to use burlap in your suit, you got to understand this stuff is extremely flammable. If you have a full suit of this stuff on and you get near a fire, uh, you're going to go up. So you have to use fire retardant if you're going to use burlap. Even the stuff that you buy already strung, you're going to want to put a fire retardant application on it. Um, you're going to tie in your burlap, you're going to have your suit all ready to go, and then at that point you're going to fire retard it. Uh, you can get it from Camouflage Systems. They have a bag that's two applications for ten bucks, uh, and it's the cheapest, uh, most effective way to go. Because if you're going to be having burlap in your suit, you are a walking time bomb. So here's your burlap on fire. You see it's going up pretty quick. You don't want to have the sucker on and be struggling to get it off and have your suit hook up on you and not be able to get off. This stuff's going. We're just about done. And this looks a little dark, but when it dries out, it's going to lighten a little bit. See, I got here a nice green. It's kind of a, a blend between like a leaf green and an olive drab. We're going to look it up against this stuff. This is the stuff you buy. This is an olive drab. Or is this, this is an olive drab. This is like a forest green. And you can see the sample that we just dyed is right there. So you're going to wait for this stuff to dry out. And then once it's dry, you're going to cut it into strips and tie in the strips, or you're going to destring it. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So when you're going to destring, you're going to cut your burlap. This has already been dyed, as you can see. I'm cutting off the edges because the edges um, are sewn. You're going to want a loose piece of material to destring. So once you get your material, it's all been dyed, it's all ready to go, you start individually pulling out the strings. You can see that you got anchor each side, you got to pull and place them down, pull and place, pull and place. So you can see this is a bit time consuming, but if you get a good head of steam going. So I've destrung this. Stuff's all ready to go. You just divide and tie it into your suit. Okay, so what we've got is our mesh material, and we are cutting it into 14 inch lengths across the whole width. And since you don't want to cut your leaves individually, because you'd go insane, <coughs> we've taken our 14 inch pieces and we're going to just layer them on top of each other. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to do the three inch widths. So with all these together, and hopefully you've got scissors that can go for it, I'm going to cut. And you want these as perfectly rectangular as possible. Because once you cut it, you're going to pick it up, you're going to double it over so that all the sides are flush. You're going to cut your excess so they're all pretty much on the same page. For your leaves, you cut triangles. And you work along the edges, I like that. Pretty much all the way to the bend point. Reverse, and then cut the other side. You don't have to be exact, but you're going to want a jagged edge. 
You just don't want square blocks for your camouflage. Because if you have jagged edges, your material is gonna have better blending properties. So now, I've got about 20 leaves done. And once I take the leaf, each individual leaf is gonna be tied into your netting. And when you tie it in, what you're gonna wanna do is give it a twist. Because when you give it a twist, it kind of has a structure to it where the leaf actually pops out a bit. Now with normal 3D camouflage, they just sew straight across. And then you've got this limp leaf that just kind of hangs there on the side and it doesn't have any type of bushing qualities. So once again, you are want to give it a twist and then tie it in. And all of a sudden you've got leaves that kind of stick out. Here we have our three-quarter netting. We have our pattern right here, which is two feet high, 20 inches wide at the base. And it kind of curves in to the neck area, which is 13 and a half inches, and rounds off at the top. And once again, it's two feet high. So you're gonna take the netting that we bought from the store. This is the same three-quarter inch netting that we're using for pretty much everything. And I've got two plies of it right here. One's going to be the front and one's going to be the back. With your handy dandy scissors, you just cut along your pattern. Ta-da! So you're going to cut two of these suckers. Make sure your netting kind of rests kind of flat. This stuff expands and contracts. Uh, it's kind of hard to get a bead on it because uh, you cut a pattern when it's contracted and then all of a sudden when you, when you wear it, it's extremely wide. Uh, also, if you cut it and it's too far stretched, and when you actually wear it, it cinches down on you and it's too tight. So try and get it so that the squares in the mesh are... Uh, not wide and they're not condensed. They're kind of at this kind of rusting uh, size right here. Once again, I'm going to cut the second piece from the netting. So with these two pieces, you now got to combine them. Lay them on top of each other so they're flush. And to combine these suckers by tying burlap in around the edges, connecting the netting by tying through both pieces and then just doing a simple overhand knot. Go to about maybe uh, here. So you're going to want this flap open. Got it. start tying the front side, we're just going to take off his glasses and we're going to try it on real quick. Now he's legally blind. So with this in place, we're going to delineate where his eyes are because we're not going to want to tie camouflage into the eye area. So what I'm going to do is take this camouflage right here and place it right between his eyes. so that when he continues tying, he'll know not to tie camouflage in this area. Um, there are some holes here, so we might want to tie a little more camouflage. Grab a piece, I'm gonna thread in some synthetic. All right, Bruce, so. So Bruce is gonna tie in his camouflage. He's gonna put the majority on the top part because you want a nice bushy top head. And what we're doing again is we're going to give it a little twist in the middle and then do our overhand knot. Once again, that twisting action is going to kind of keep your leaves 
a little more rigid. It's going to give a little more structure. Also, you don't want to tie the netting holes together. You only want to take one and tie it to that. If you take two and tie it to two, all of a sudden you're cinching these things together and you're changing uh, the whole structure of your, uh, of your, of your headgear. Exactly. You want to get a good shape. Yeah, you want to keep your shape that you've already cut. Okay, so what we got here is your 3D veil, which is uh, all the rage right now. Um, but as you can see, these leaves that they have tied in only give minimal amount of 3D effect. I mean, they can call it 3D because it is 3D, but it stuff does not work. As you can see, the outline's got very sharp shapes. There's no blending, and the 3D effect is uh, extremely minimal. Go now, here we have what Bruce has been working on. So as you can see, the 3D effect is a lot more effective. You can see the blending process, where you see light and the color of the background actually passing through this uh, material. So you have a lot of uh, blend right here, and then as you get closer to his head, you can see that it gets darker and that more of that material overlaps. You can see you got this big bushy effect where the space between the head and the shoulders has been completely filled out, kind of giving him a mounded, rounded look. You can see there's still netting left here, um, still areas to put more of the synthetic leaf or burlap, whatever you're going to use. Here's another version. Um, it's kind of basically the British sniper veil that we showed you. So the front element is the same cut that we used before. However, the back piece, as you can see, is extremely long. Also, it has more of a shoulder area extended out. So with this, you're going to have your torso camouflaged. You're going to have your head in the back of the head. And then you're going to have the whole back area so that you can camouflage uh, your entire back down to your, uh, your behind. And so this will fit over a backpack or whatever. And we also put a little drawstring around the rim so that if you want to really tighten your aperture, you can, or you can leave it large. And with the drawstring, if you open it up all the way, then you can take it off your head. So we're going to show you the diagram for this right now. So the dimensions are, from the shoulders, it's three feet. comes into 16 inches and it rounds off to about 21 inches high and this is going to be the front piece that we're going to cut. The back piece is also going to be this area but it's going to extend all the way down to here. So it will extend to about 40, 41 inches long. Now if you want this extra long, if you want it to go down to the back of your leg, then you're going to add, you know, another, say, 18 inches. So we're going to cut out our netting so we can start working. Right up there. All right. So I'm first going to cut the front element. So here's the front piece. It doesn't have to be exact, but it should be close. And then, we're going to cut <coughs> the back piece. Now we're going to take the top part element, right here. Gonna match it up. And just like uh, the British sniper veil, 
we're going to take our camouflage material, whether it be burlap string or the synthetic leaves, and start tying it around the edge, combining these two pieces of netting. So we've done our initial tie job. And now we got this here. Thanks, bud. Thanks, bud. Okay, so you see that it comes down to about a sternum, covers the uh, shoulders, you turn around, it comes down in the back. So we're going to start tying in the whole suit. If you turn around one more time. And now we're going to cut the face hole. And you can either cut a little area just for your face peeking through, or you can cut a larger area and then have a, a, one of those shock cords going around the edge of your cut so that you can cinch it if you like. So this hole is going to be wide enough, just wide enough, you can get your head through. Can you get your head through there? Yep. Good, perfect. All right, we'll take that off. While well, these yeah. guys are tying in, going to do uh, the cinch cord for the face. I'm going to find the bottom. This is the top of the head. This is right here at the nap of the neck. I'm going to start here. I'm pull the way through. <laughs> See what happens? I'm going to pull the way through. I'm going to tie this so it doesn't do what it just did. And then I'm going to work my way, weaving in and out. Holes at the last bit of netting. So I've come around full circle. I've untied my knot. So I've got now both both cords here at the base. Now you can either tie it off right here with the size hole you like, or you can get these little jobbies. You thread it through, pull through on each side. Make sure you, when you get these little plastic things that they're going to actually work with uh, the cord you got. So with that through, then I'm going to tie off each end in a little teeny overhand knot. Since down that side, since down the side, so this way I'm assured that it's not going to come back out through. This is the full body version of the things that we've been doing. Um, it's complete body coverage. Um, it's got camouflage on the front, so it's definitely not for a low crawl, you know, stock. This is definitely for a a walking deal. <laughs> there he is. So you can see it's uh, pretty much uh, down past the knees, but uh, you can, of course, cut the net so it goes longer, or you can tie more burlap and to the very end let it hang down. Um, if you put your arms out, see it's full arm coverage. Um, you see it's hanging loose here. Uh, what we recommend is getting a little bit of that shock cord or that elastic material and once again thread it through the fishnet so it has kind of a, like a nice little tight fit. Once again, uh, you got your face aperture here. And the back we have not tied yet, if you turn around. And put your arms out. You can see pretty much the cut you should be getting with this uh, netting. It's two identical pieces. You're going to cut two pieces out of netting. Uh, they're going to be identical in shape. Um, right here we've got the arm length at exactly four feet. But these have been chopped off. So you're going to want to go, depending on how long your arms are, you're probably going to want to go another foot on each side. So you've got six feet extending out. 
So these lines will extend out another foot on each side. We have an arm width right here of about nine inches. Uh, you might want to go uh, 10 inches to be safe. For the torso, we have 20 inches. But if uh, you've got a bigger frame, you might want to go, say, to 24 inches. The whole height of this pattern is 65 inches. Um, so if, if you're 5 foot 10, uh, this netting should go just to your knees. If you want it longer, then you're going to extend this pattern at the base by a, a, however much you want. Once you get the headpiece up here, it's pretty much the same thing that we've been using before. For this one, we've roughly got about 14 inches wide with about 15, 16 inches high. So I'm going to cut out some netting right now. So when you buy this netting, make sure you get enough for whatever uh, you're going to be cutting out. Before cutting, you might want to put some weights down so that your netting doesn't move on you. As I go. So I'm just going that extra foot out. Since it's cinching here, this is probably a foot right there. Come straight across. That's your cuff. Since this is for Bruce, he's kind of a thick guy, so I'm going to come out about an inch and a half on the torso on each side. There's not a real problem with overcutting. So if you're going to do your cut, make sure you always overcut by at least an inch or two. If you undercut, then this thing is going to be too tight and you've wasted all that leather. Here's our template for the full body piece. This is the front or back, it doesn't matter, you're just going to need an identical piece that you can sandwich together. And once again, you're going to be sewing the two pieces together by tying the camouflage at the very edge of both pieces. Well, you've got your loose uh, holes at the end of your sleeve. And just like we did, we're going to weave that elastic band through the perimeter, cinch it down so it's kind of a nice fit, and then tie it off. You don't really need those little, uh, those little draw plastic things. The next camouflage system is called a bush rag. It's pretty much a poncho that covers pretty much down past your shins. You've got holes for your arms. So it's a one piece deal for your torso, your shoulders, and down past your shins. Then you have an individual piece this is your headpiece. Uh, it's camouflage tied into a piece of netting that is uh, roughly 18 inches across by about two feet long. So we're going to show you how to put this thing together uh, right now. First thing you're going to do is you're going to cut a little slit for your head to go through. So you find your halfway point by folding your body piece in half. And then I'm going to cut a hole for my head to go through. And if I overcut, or if you overcut, you can always take some of your burlap material. Say if this is too large, I need to kind of tie this back into place so that there's a smaller aperture for your head to go through. You're going to tie in burlap along the sides here. So I'm going to tie points, but I'm not going to go all the way to the top because this is what my arms are going to go through. But this feels like, you know, a good loose fit. 
There's no belt that you need to attach this with. It's just like a smock that fits over. You're gonna start tying in your burlap material or your synthetic. And you're gonna wanna put a lot more material up in the shoulder areas so that it kind of bushes up, it hangs down over your arms. Um, and with the mass that you have here of netting, you're just gonna lightly put in, you know, burlap, you know, every, uh, every two, three inches, you're gonna tie in a bit. I have my headpiece here. Um, what I'm first gonna do is cut slits along the top. Because if you have camouflage on this hat and you're in heat, a lot of the heat that your body actually releases comes out of your head. And so if you can cut holes to ventilate this hat, you're gonna lose a little bit more heat. So I'm gonna cut a whole bunch of holes. You can either cut slits like I've done, to let the heat out better, or you can just cut the whole top of the hat off. So you've just got uh, pretty much like a ring around your head. We're going to attach this netting to it. This is the front of my hat. The netting should reach just to the tip of the rim. Along the sides, there should probably be maybe like an inch overhang. And then the majority of the netting will hang over the back. This will be covering kind of your upper back and uh, the back of your neck. We want to make sure that you don't tie it tight down like this, because when you actually put on your hat, it's not going to have any give for your head. OK, attaching it, I've got a boonie hat here, floppy hat. It's got some um, loops. And what I can do is attach this netting to the hat via the loops. So I'll just take a little burlap bundle here, and I will tie this off with a uh, square knot. Now, if you don't have any loops, any places to attach your netting to your hat, then what you're going to do is you're going to have to cut in slits along the side here. Um, I've got scissors, which isn't the greatest thing. We'll try it anyway. Cut a little slit right here. And this slit's about an inch long. I take my uh, burlap string, feed it through that little slit I just cut, pull it through my netting, and cinch down on it. So you'll cut, if you're going to have to cut slits along the edge, you're going to cut pretty much six slits around the tire rim. That way uh, you're going to firmly put your netting onto your hat. I'm going to start tying in my camouflage material, whether it be burlap or synthetic. Um, it's important to tie a lot of material on the very top of your head into this netting here. You should tie so much material that it becomes hard to find room in this netting to tie in. That will create such a crowd of material that it will force the fibers up and that will give you kind of a nice big bushy head. When tying in the material, you'll probably be tying in 8-inch lengths onto the top and around this section. Um, in the back, you can use longer pieces to drape down. Uh, you'll be tying in stuff along the side here so that it'll camouflage the side of your head, but not actually your face. ourselves a sniper blanket. It's already made up and it's been made as you can see in a desert pattern. It's got the tans, it's got some browns, and it's got some blacks. Uh, pretty much a sniper blanket is used to cover yourself up. Say if you're in the prone position, you can get underneath this sucker. Or if you're on a stock, you can bring it up. kind of drape it over yourself. And then also with these sniper blankets, uh, you can make them um, and use them for a blind. So you have, we're using that same three quarter inch netting. I've reversed it. See, this is about six feet long. 
by four feet wide. And if you're going to use this as a blind, uh, you might want to have some, uh, some real thin rope with you or some elastic bands so that you can tie some of these ends off to trees or to shrubs, tying up into this branch. And take the other end. So I'm just using the burlap string to tie in. But if you have some cordage that you can extend farther off the burlap, then you have a then you have a uh, greater opportunities in finding pe you know, branches are farther away, tying in and then draping it over the area that you want to hide in. So this is my insta cover. So the dimensions are six feet by four feet, and you can see with this uh, burlap tied into it, it makes a real nice blind. Granted, I'm not in any, uh, I don't have any camo on myself, but you can see that you know, it's, it's pretty effective to covering this whole area. Of course, the last thing to do is get some natural vegetation from the area that you're going to be hiding in. I'm just kind of doing a real quick weed. So once again, this netting, this three-quarter inch netting, really takes vegetation quite easily. That's a great base in front of these camouflage systems just by the simple fact that you can just thread vegetation into it. A quick thread. Once this natural vegetation is in, you can have a really effective blind. Got our little rifle. And to camouflage it, what people do in the past is they take burlap on the two inch and they cut say 12 inch lengths or longer and then you wrap your rifle this isn't a bad way to go but every time you want to camouflage your rifle you're tying on say you know 20 of these pieces here are some of our dyed camouflage that we, we dyed our burlap bag and uh, we've cut our swatches out of it because this two inch you can't get anymore. So we've kind of created our own two inch. And I'm going to just tie it around the, let's say the rifle here. This is breaking up this big black object. So there's that way to go. And then there's also the string burlap. And once again, you're just tying it around your rifle. You want to make sure that you don't block your sights. You don't want to block your ejection port. You don't want to get it in the way of the mechanisms of the mag release or the mag itself. But still, you want to cover enough so that this big black object blends in with the environment you're going to be in. But every time you do this, it takes a lot of time to camouflage, say, tying in 30 pieces every time you go out. There's a quicker way to camouflage your equipment is here's some elastic that we bought in our store. This is an elastic shock cord. All this stuff is in olive drab, but it can be black. Uh, you can get this stuff in black. You can get whatever you color you want. I'm going to cut only about a six foot length. And on one end, I'm going to tie a loop into place. There's any knot, you just want a little teeny loop at the end. Good. Okay. Now what I'm doing is I'm tying my burlap string into this uh, elastic band. This is about 10 uh, strings. I tie it into the elastic band with an overhand knot, cinch down. And if I want this to stay in place on my elastic band, um, so it doesn't slide, then I could in turn tie my elastic band around that knot and cinch down on it. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing this. What I'd recommend is just keeping it nice, uh, loose knot that can slide so that once you wrap this around your rifle, you can slide your camouflage into the positions you want. And you can also tie in like the, the burlap strips. 
And of course, you can tie in your synthetic leaves. You can also put the elastic band first around your rifle and then tie in your burlap. What you do is you reach through your loop that you've tied into the end of your elastic, reach through, you grab the elastic band forming a cinch loop, you let it cinch around your weapon, and you take your camouflage Wrap it around your weapon. Wrap it around my scope. And then on the end, you can either just leave it long and just tie off to say to your, your strap mount down here, this little loop strap mount. Or you can just tie it around kind of the butt of your weapon. You know, I'd start to add in more stuff and I'd Put some camouflage back up here so it kind of drapes down a bit. Uh, you don't want to get in the way of your ejection port. Really a real expedient way to camouflage your weapon. And then when you're done with the camouflage, it's not having to untie 30 knots. You just unwind the elastic. We can take this thing off in a minute. Another way to do it, I would just recommend getting this half inch nylon elastic. And you can get this stuff, you know, at uh, any type of sewing supply place, any type of fabric place. Um, you, it doesn't come in olive drab, but it comes in black, and black's fine. The next one, you're going to take two six foot lengths. And now what you do, you're going to sew at two inch intervals along the whole length of this so that every two inches you've got these two bands melded together. Um, it's going to take a little time. Uh, another expedient way is to actually just tie knots, overhand knots, every two to three inches. So I can really cinch down this stuff. So I've got a knot there. I move down, say, three inches. Tie another knot. When this is wrapped around your rifle, uh, you'll be able to stick natural vegetation in between the bands. Uh, you're going to wrap your rifle, and you're going to have it nice and tight, nice and snug, against the rifle. Because what you want is you want these two layers to be nice and snug against each other. So now I've got this elastic band. It's a dual ply, nice and snug, looped around the entire length of my weapon. Now I'm going to get a little natural vegetation. So you're going to take your natural vegetation, kind of little small pieces, and then you're just going to insert it. It's nice that it's nice and snug. It's going to have a real good gripping quality. You just insert it into your elastic band. So you're assured that you're going to match your environment because you're actually using the exact environment you're going to be in as camouflage. You can see that it really breaks up the whole rifle. This vegetation is going to stick on. It might start to wilt. The broader leaf stuff wilts like in about two hours. Whereas if you use like pines, that'll last all day. Dried grass lasts, of course, until it falls out. I feel the best way is really to go with the double banded elastic so that you can insert natural vegetation. But prior to going out, I'd recommend tying in your burlap or tying in your synthetic leaves into the actual elastic material so that you always have this camouflage. This stuff isn't going to dry out on you and it has a different type of quality. You know, you got your string quality and you got your leaf quality that has this pattern in it. But you also have the option with this kind of double banded elastic of sticking in natural vegetation when you're out in the field. So you get the best of both worlds. So this is the finished product. Uh, 
You've got your burlap tied into your elastic band. You've got uh, these nice leaf cuts out of the mesh material. And then you've got uh, the natural vegetation, which slips into the elastic bands. Camouflaging a backpack um, is pretty much just building a ghillie suit for a backpack. Um, take the backpack you're going to use. You're going to take two measurements off of it. You're going to measure from the base where it touches your back all the way around to the very top where it touches the back of your neck. I've got three feet as my measurement. But I'm going to add an extra, say, four inches. So I've got now 40 inches. Widthwise, I'm measuring around the entire backpack. And you can see that I've loaded the backpack up already. You don't want to measure your backpack when it's empty, or you're not going to get the right measurement. So around the width, I've got about 38 inches. And once again, I'm going to add, say, four inches, so I have 42 inches. So for this Alice pack, I've got 40 by 42. And to be safe, you might, instead of adding four inches, you might add eight inches. So then I have 44 by 46 is my measurement. Richard's already cut this netting, and this is about a 40 by 48 inch piece of netting. Uh, it's cinched up because he's already threaded through this elastic material. And you're gonna need to get about three feet, four feet of elastic material for this. Once again, we have the shock cord that we can use and you can get this black, or we have this half inch elastic band. And you can also get this in black and use this as well. Make sure and tie off one end so yeah, you don't go around five times. Tie off one end and then uh, just thread it through right along the edge. Yeah. Um, I like to cheat in one, too, so that uh, in case it breaks at some point. You don't tie off. All of a sudden, this end is going to start following you through, and you're going to lose your thread. And you've kind of got now this kind of uh, this bag type effect. So that this is going to go around the exterior backpack, and then you're going to cinch down. So bring around the back of it, all the way around it, and over the lip. And you can see that it's a real nice fit. Now with backpacks, if you've got like a, a backpacking backpack, one that has a high upper mound, um, then this is going to fit over nicely. However, these that have the straps right here at the top, you've got the problem that this is going to slip off. So what you do is you get a bungee cord. We've used this uh, shock cord, and we've tied it into these two, uh, these two hooks to have a little custom uh, bungee. But you can get a regular bungee cord. You're going to thread underneath the straps and hook in. And this will keep it from going over. And this is what we call a camo pack. So now, we're going to start tying in the burlap. And we're going to tie the burlap in with it on the backpack. Reason being, um, the, the camouflage is going to hang down. And so we're going to need to add more to the top and less on the bottom because the stuff will drape down. You might want to use a loose knot. Because if you get out in the field, and when we get out in the field, we're going to see if this stuff works. Um, if it's a tight knot and we want to do any adjustments, if we want to move the camouflage from point to point, or if we want to just get rid of the camouflage, it won't be so hard. So initially, we're just going to use a kind of a loose overhand knot. Uh, also, when you're tying in your burlap, it's nice to tie in a third the way of your burlap. So that way, you've got a smaller piece that kind of hangs out more, and then a longer piece that drapes down. Or what you can do is cut your burlap in half and tie in a smaller piece, say a six to eight inch piece, 
And what you do is, it, since it's smaller, it sticks up farther. We like to use the smaller pieces on the top portion. Um, this gives kind of more of a mounding quality of the top, whereas on the bottom, you can just drape it down and get more coverage. So Richard's done a stand-up job over here, haven't you? Thank you. Um, he's kind of got this uh, light green with a, a tan mixed in. Now he's going to take his darker browns and blacks. He's going to start tying them into general areas. So you'll probably take blacks and browns, tie here, 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 make a big black area and brown area over here, and then maybe one over here. So it kind of breaks up this general uh, coloration you got going. But he's got it. And you can see that this string is a bit straight. Uh, in time, the string is going to curl. Uh, if you want more curl right away, you can just take some a spritzer bottle, uh, a little spray bottle, or some water, and just put some water on this stuff. And these fibers are going to get a little larger, and they're going to swell, and they're going to uncurl a bit. And as they uncurl, they're going to start making all these weird shapes that are quite nice. These bush patches, what they're primarily used for, and what we also recommend doing, is to iron them onto your BDUs. You get 10 patches for a pack, and you iron them on to your high shoulder area, to uh, your sleeve, top sleeve, onto the upper back. Once again, over here, high on the chest, upper sleeve, on the back. And you can actually, if you've got your shooting arm holding the front part of your rifle, you might put a bush patch over here. I've got this beat up old uh, boonie, and I've placed three bush patches. One on the front, and then one here on the side, and another one on the side. You can also put one on the back. Now, with these bush patches in place, once again, you're going to iron them on. You stick in natural vegetation. And you're going to take your hat, and you're just going to start stuffing in these little branches into the elastic bands. So pretty soon, you can see it's quite easy to really start to camouflage your gear. And this vegetation held by these elastic bands really stays in place. So within, you know, 20, 30 seconds, you've already done a pretty good job on your head. Now, if you don't want to go out and spend $12 for a bush patch, you're going to get your elastic material, and you're going to cut three-inch pieces, a whole bunch of them. And then you're going to sew these suckers into place. And when you sew them, you're going to want to have two of them side by side so that the vegetation, as in with these bush patches, you can stick through two pieces of elastics. That really holds the vegetation in place. You want vegetation that's just going to droop, hang wherever. You want it in a very specific place that's effective. Once again, this is time consuming, and these bush patches really work. So the first thing we're going to field test is going to be these bush patches. So we're getting some natural vegetation. In this case, we're getting pine. And we're going to add these to these patches, see how well they work. It's natural vegetation. I'm kind of putting through both of those elastic bands. And here I have a design which is just one bar of elastic. So you see how quickly this stuff works. I'm not using both bands to tie in this stuff all the time. You can just use one band if you like. And we've got the headgear. 
Once again, we've got four patches for the headgear. And some of these boonies hats come with that uh, band that encircles it. This one doesn't. That band is pretty good for putting in natural vegetation, but it doesn't have that elasticity that will hold it in place. So you lose a lot of vegetation that you put in those holes. And they also don't stick straight up, which is a kind of nice option to have. So on the clock, you can gearing up for about, I'd say, three minutes. If you want to take some camouflage and hang it down, you know, you've got that head shoulder area that you want to cover. Sticking that stuff in, kind of letting it drop down. And I want to cover some in the front area. Some stick vegetation there. Granted, his face hasn't been camoed, but you can see that his upper body, head, shoulders, are pretty much well blended into the natural background. Um, once again, you can have patches that are further down on the torso. You can have these patches on your legs. Um, if you wanted to do your entire body, it'd take about, I'd say, 30 tie points to pretty much cover the whole uh, deal. This rifle wrap, what we've done is we've put in the string burlap, we've put in the burlap strips, and we also put in the synthetic. So this has got all the various pieces of camouflage that we talked about, except for what? Natural vegetation. Here we got Bruce. And he's got his camouflage. The only problem I see with this, some of this natural vegetation is probably sticking up and getting in the way of his line of sight. That's a pretty good, uh, pretty good camel job. We've got the camel pack on, and the last thing, of course, is we're feeding in natural vegetation in through that three-quarter netting that we got. So what you're going to do is you're not just going to stuff it through one hole, you're going to kind of lace it through if you want it to stick. Pull it through. He's bunding in good. All right, so we're putting on the sniper head and shoulder piece. And you might want to keep that open, bud. No, it's closed. To you. A little bit closed. So you can see the stuff is uh, really hanging nice. Um, you've got some real nice uh, blend between the head and the shoulders. Um, of course, his face isn't uh, camoed, so it's sticking out, but that's good. We can see that there's somebody in here. And uh, what we're going to do is put some vegetation in through uh, this British sniper veil. And this isn't going to need a lot. I mean, he's already just blending in real nice. So you can see that he's a little dark in the frame. His whole camouflage is a bit dark. But you can see how the light is playing on him right now. It's got that three-dimensional look. Um, areas are receiving a, a sunlight, so they're highlighted just like natural vegetation. But also their shadows cast into uh, the camouflage outfit, getting a darker uh, a look to it. And you can see by the dog's reaction. Yeah, Benji, what is that? What's that thing? Is that Richard? <laughs> Okay, so Bruce has got the whole suit on. You can see that it's a, a string burlap and synthetic blend. Um, there's areas where it might need a little coverage, but on the whole, this is uh, pretty good. And this whole suit probably weighs about four, maybe four and a half pounds. And you, if you take off the hood part, you can see how that hood, which is attached to the piece, that comes off, so if you want to take off the hood and take a gander around, you can. The whole veil does a lot of good as far as breaking up the head and the shoulder area and just creating a little mound. And this thing probably weighs maybe eight ounces. And with all these suits, I mean, you can make them larger, you can make them a little wider. It's whatever area you, you want to be covering. Whatever type of job you're going to be doing, if you turn around, this netting, 
you can extend it a little bit, add stuff, just cover this area. Or with the other version, you know, you can go all the way down to uh, the back of the knees. So uh, these suits work well. We uh, just took them out in the field. Uh, they bushed up nice. Uh, they broke up the outline really well. Um, the only problem that I saw with them is that they were generally a little too dark for the area that we're going to be operating in. Um, so once again, we can add in more of these uh, patterns um, so that our suit is a bit lighter. Or what we can do, and which I recommend, is getting that tan burlap. This is that raw burlap that we've taken the actual strings out of. And I'm just going to tie in burlap into the synthetic. So I find my little holes in the netting, tying through. And I'm just going to work around the suit and lighten it up a bit. Now what we should have done, and which I recommend personally that you should do, is that you should take all the materials that you're going to be using out into the bush so that when you're actually making these suits, uh, you're in the environment that you're actually going to be uh, working in. And another nice, real nice thing about working with this three-quarter inch netting is that you can change your suit. If you feel like you've put too much stuff in that's, uh, say, too much dark stuff, you can untie it, take it out, or you can add stuff while you're in the field. And of course, the terrain that you're going to be uh, working in is going to change. And from season to season, um, you could walk 10 miles and be in a completely different terrain. And if you're going to be sitting there for a while, or if you're going to be uh, hunting or doing whatever, you might want to take some of the stuff out that does not work. So I'm taking out some of the darker material and putting in lighter stuff. This is your military style ghillie suit, which we showed you how to construct in the Art of Camouflage 1. You can see that it's pretty much a flight suit. We've taken this heavy canvas material, and you can see that we shoe gooed it, the whole seam. There's two patches here for the chest, and then here for your knee area, we have another heavy canvas patch. Also, <coughs> for your arms, See, we've got a heavy patch that runs along the base here, so when you're crawling, you're not destroying your uh, elbow on any rocks. Um, you can see the back part of it, which is pretty much just a netting that's been tied in place along the entire length of the back, and then this burlap material is tied into the actual netting. All shown in the Art of Camouflage 1. Uh, today we're going to show you some variations to this. I got here some needles. You're going to need a needle and you're going to need some real heavy thread. You can use light thread, but you're going to have to use a lot of it. What we're going to want to do is make some stirrups. When you're wearing your ghillie suit and you're crawling along on the ground, your sleeves are going to have a tendency to ride up on your arm. So what you're going to do is take an elastic band Cut a nice size length, eight inches. And you're gonna sew it into the cuff of your ghillie suit. So that way, when your hand is out your sleeve, you're gonna have a little elastic band that's gonna keep the sleeve from riding back. You have your leg of your ghillie suit. Uh, there's a possibility that your suit will ride up on you. So we're going to attach another stirrup onto the base. Your foot's going to fit in there and your boot over the foot. And that's going to keep this leg pant from riding up on you when you're crawling along in the bush. So right now I'm sewing in the stirrup. This is the leg stirrup. So once that stirrup's in place, then you put your boot on. Now if you want your pant leg to go over your boot, 
Then you're going to want to attach your stirrup inside. You're going to want to sew up here. So if your stirrup is tied farther up onto your leg, then this material will be able to hang down farther on the boot. So here we have uh, our flight suit. It's a used surplus. This flight suit is Nomex. Uh, it's a Nomex material so that it's fire retardant. So if you have another layer between you and that flammable burlap um, that doesn't catch on fire, that's kind of a good thing. There are a couple uh, army fellows that uh, died because their ghillie suits caught on fire. We're going to cut out a panel from the back. We're going to cut a square of this material out and we're going to replace it with some mosquito netting. It's going to let the heat from the body escape a bit more so that uh, you've got a little more comfortable suit. This has a natural flap. I'm going to leave that in place since this has some nice integrity to it. So I'm going to cut my hole. Well, the entire back part here. So here we have our material. Lay it over our hole. And I'm going to give it a little extra. Because when we sew, we're going to double over this netting and here it to the sides. So I'm going to give a little extra width. So here we go. Here's our flight suit. Cut out the hole on the back. There's the mosquito netting that's going to fit over it. So I'm going to tailor the mosquito netting a bit so that we have about, looks like an inch and a half overlay. When we attach this mosquito netting, we're going to give it a little lip. It's got a little more structure to it. And we're going to sew it to the back of the flight suit. Um, if you don't have a sewing machine, uh, you can try shoe glue. The shoe glue that you can get at Kmart. Now when you use this stuff, you want to be in a well-ventilated area because this stuff reeks. So what I'm going to do is double over my netting, place it over my hole, and take my shoe goo, make a nice healthy seam with it. Once that goo is in place, Put your netting down. Now, when you're working with shugu, you're definitely going to want to use gloves. So you're going to want to mesh the glue into the netting so that the glue actually starts coming through your netting holes. And once this is in place, you're going to do the entire seam of your suit. And once you've done the whole thing, you're going to want to put down a layer over the shoe glue and then put a heavy object down so that when it dries, it dries in place and it dries real tight against the suit. And this is kind of an, an expedient way to attach netting if you don't have a sewing machine. Instead of just making these big canvas patches, we're going to leave a flap on the top on these patches. That allows you to put some padding in between the flight suit and the patch. So, you know, a piece of carpet, uh, some real hardcore foam, um, or even maybe a couple more layers of canvas. So that when you're crawling on the rocks, you've got more than just two layers. I've got this nice thick fabric that I'm gonna use for my patch. And you can go a thicker canvas. Um, they have rubberized canvas, which is good. This is a nylon weave with a camouflage pattern. And then on the back, there's a nice PVC waterproof base. It's a little thin, but that's OK for today. So I'm going to cut my patch out. Now the patch, of course, is going to ride right next to the zipper. 
and it's going to go all the way. The patch should ride all the way up to here. So I'm going to cut out this patch. Uh, you don't want any corners with these patches because uh, if you've got a sharp corner, um, it has a tendency to catch and pull off the suit. So when you cut your patches, you're going to round the corners off. Nice big round corners. Once again, we're either going to sew it or we're going to use the shugu. And the shugu is a pretty good replacement for uh, the sewing machine. What we're going to do is take our patch, flip it. We're going to put a real healthy amount right along the seam. Really stuff that stuff on. And once again, you got to be in a well ventilated area for this stuff. As you can see, I did not glue the top part. And now with this, I'm going to flip it. Place it right there. Once again, I did not put any glue here on the top. And with this patch, you're going to let this sucker dry. And you're going to want to put a nice heavy object along the entire seam. This object's only going to work for one side. Then what you're going to do is you're going to go back over your whole patch. And you're just going to glob it on the seam so you don't have any fabric riding. Because you have any type of lip. You're going to have rocks, you're going to have twigs catching and tearing it off of your flight suit. So I'm going to make a real heavy duty, nasty seam. And then I should be wearing gloves. So I'm going to use this to kind of work it in to the fabric. And this is going to go along the entire length, except for the top. Now the top part, we are going to add a flap, another flap, another piece to the top here. And this piece, I'm going to round the bottom corner a little bit, but on top I'm going to really round that sucker. I don't want any little corner to catch on natural vegetation. Now this top part is going to be glued along these two sides and along the top. Once again, real healthy amount of glue. And when you flip this on, you're going to want the bottom part to override this top part by about an inch. Once again, I'm going to press Make sure my, my flight suit's nice and flat. Press the sucker down. And really work it in. I really want to work this glue and this material together. And then for this top area, you're going to want to glue the seam again. And this is the area that should receive a lot of glue because you don't want these patches to come off of your suit when you're in the bush. Once again, I'm only gluing the sides and the top. I'm leaving the bottom open. Now this top part forms kind of a pocket. When the sucker is in place, you're going to be able to stuff stuff down this pocket. What we got here are these canvas, uh, real thick canvas material that we got at the surplus store. And uh, we've got our patch 
that has now dried. It's adhered to our, our flight suit for our ghillie suit. Um, and you can see it's pretty well dried. And it's got this, uh, this kind of uh, expedient pocket that we can now take our burlap, stuff it in there. So this gives you a little extra padding when you're crawling. And I could put in thicker stuff. Uh, this canvas was a little uh, thin. It doesn't go all the way to the edges on the inside, but uh, it's a real thick material. So what you can do is take a canvas material like this um, and then take some foam or some carpet and just shoe goo um, the two suckers together. So you have a real thick uh, element that real sharp uh, objects won't pierce through. And then you'd have a nice foam layer um, that will be for more of a comfort thing. So once again, you just take your pocket, stuff your padding into it, make sure it's flat. And then close it. And this flap, when you're crawling forward, uh, isn't going to catch. It's only when you're going to be going backwards that this flap might uh, give you some problem. Um, and if you don't want to have a flap, if you just say, hey, you know, a, piece of, a couple pieces of canvas um, is going to be good for me, then uh, I would just bypass this flap thing altogether. Last thing we're going to do, you got your top of your uh, ghillie suit here. We're going to put some uh, elastic bands here on the top. Uh, this way you can stick natural vegetation um, into the shoulder area. Yeah, your ghillie suit right here. You're going to want to make some little elastic bands so that you can place natural vegetation into your suit when you're out in the bush. So you can take these little two to three inch bands. You're going to sew the ends into your suit. So that way, when you're wearing your suit and you're in the bush, you can stick natural vegetation to the bands. Now, it's kind of a bit of a pain to uh, sew these individual pieces into your suit. What we got here are these bush patches. Um, I think these retail for about 12 bucks. You get 10 patches. And this is going to save you a lot of time if you use these suckers. These are iron-on patches as well, so you got to know how to use an iron. Take one of these patches, place it up there in the shoulder area. You take your iron, and you iron that sucker for about 20 seconds on a high heat. And really press down hard. Yeah! Ha! You're also going to run your iron around the edges to make sure you get a real good seal. Place your iron on the hot and just work those edges into the fabric. All right, with these little patches in place, you just stick your natural vegetation into these elastic bands. There's four elastic bands in this square, so when you stick in vegetation, you can stick it through two elastic bands at once. And this puts that vegetation right in the most important spot, right here on the head and the shoulder area.